Our next speaker is Ms. Lillian P. Coro, MPP, Chief Data Officer for the City of Los Angeles. Ms. Coro spent 15 years working on a wide range of health and human services issues and an advocate, as an advocate and executive leader. The topic she is going to share with us this morning is how do the public and private sector contribute more for open data and better utilize it? Now, 第四位专题演讲的嘉宾是来自美国的洛杉矶，她是洛杉矶市首席数据官 Lillian P. Coro 女士。Coro 女士作为倡倡导者，还有行政领导者，花了十五年的时间，从事广泛的健康和人类服务议题。她今天的主题是。如何结集并善用开放的数据 ？Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Ms. Lillian P. Coro. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. First, I'd like to start by thanking all of the event organizers, including the government of Hong Kong, the China Internet Development Foundation, and the Smart City Consortium. Um, it's my pleasure to represent the city of Los Angeles in the office of Mayor Eric Garcetti. I'm very excited to be here. It was great this morning to learn um, and also to share the story of Los Angeles and how we're using data to drive not just government decision making, but civic engagement and co-creation. Um, as the chief data officer, my mission is to ensure that the city leverages its most vital asset, which is information. Working for the mayor, I strive to make sure that I am ready to answer questions at a moment's notice about what's happening in the city or what's about to happen. And like all of you, we've challenged ourselves to make Los Angeles a safer, prosperous, smarter city. And that requires that we be efficient and that we leverage data and technology to do so. Before getting started, um, I want to put a little bit of Los Angeles into context for you. I think it's actually very similar to Hong Kong in many ways. As one of the U.S.'s most densely populated cities, we're a, we're a city of 4 million residents in 469 square miles. We receive nearly 50 million visitors a year, um, and we have close to 100,000 businesses. Most of them are actually owned by immigrants. Over 50% are owned by immigrants. Los Angeles is not only dense, but it's also one of the most diverse cities in the world. Um, the U.S. Census estimates that there are 185 languages spoken in the city of Los Angeles. Over 50% of Angelinos actually speak another language. And we have a very decentralized form of government. We have three different tiers of governance, as well as elected bodies and administrative bodies that help to govern the city. So as you can imagine, there's a large infrastructure already in place for us to transform into this smart city. And that's one of the complexities of actually um, using data and leveraging data. Uh, just some quick facts um, that we like to think about. We have 6,000 miles of sewer, 22,000 miles of paved streets, 50,000 connected street lights, 4,500 intersections, and 2 million um, connected sensors via Google and Waze. So that's sort of the, the magnitude of the kinds of data that not only should we be consuming, but that we need to be um, analyzing daily to really think about creating that smart city that we all dream of. As we go about transforming Los Angeles in the digital area, there's lots of layers and people um, that have to be taken into consideration. And when our mayor entered into office in 2013, so just barely four years ago, he was faced with some complex challenges. Many of them are very familiar to any of you who visited Los Angeles. It includes things like traffic, street repairs, road closures, um, and at that time, even a recovering economy, um, which is something that the US has really been kind of struggling to get out from under. Climate change has also been a huge issue for Los Angeles. Um, and then there's just the everyday challenge of managing this complex city, the second largest city in the US. Um, so as a tech-savvy individual, he recognized that we really needed to actually tackle these challenges by leveraging data and technology. It was, a, it was a key pillar of his platform, and he set about to change the way that LA was investing or not in tech and data. So um, 
I was recently made aware of the ch this chart, and I really liked it because um, I'll sort of explain. Uh, I'll go through it, but I really liked the way it described the process of transforming data into organizational wisdom. And it's a really great representation, I think, of the way Los Angeles is trying to make sense of all of this information we have at our disposal. It basically says that good data, a good data strategy facilitates good decision making. And, and we, all know that, we all know that's a very simple idea. Um, but where I think it, the complexity uh, kind of gets very interesting for all of us wanting to work with data is that what it requires is that we take this organizational asset, data, and that we quantify it so that we can convert it into information that we can organize, that we need to give it meaning and context so that that information then becomes organizational knowledge that we can act upon, and that if we infuse that knowledge with insights, that's the wisdom that informs strategic thinking and informed decision making. As our mayor set about in executing that type of vision, how do we convert data that's raw, unprocessed into organizational wisdom and strategic thinking? He started by making Los Angeles an open city. And that was the first pillar and the foundational pillar of how do we really go from an, the LA of the past into the Los Angeles of the future. His third executive directive, signed in December of 2013, began the city's open data program, and it called on all departments to make publicly available raw data. He did it because we believe that if you release information that's easy to consume, that's digestible, that's machine readable, that it's gonna empower Angelinos to participate in governance, it's gonna promote innovation amongst entrepreneur and businesses, it's going to leverage our key asset, public information, and it's going to foster creative thinking about how do we solve the city's most intractable challenges. The idea there being that the more eyes we have looking at a certain problem, the more likely we are to resolve the issues that have, we've been facing that we can't seem to get beyond. The key to open data is that we start with raw data available in easy to find accessible formats. That means that they have to be machine readable. So we're moving our departments away from PDFs and into information that's linked to KPI, APIs that are easily uh, consumable. And that this data can be used and reused by anyone. And so why? Because we believe the hidden value of it is that data has to be interoperable. It's that interoperability that's going to allow city departments to collaborate together that it's going to allow us to collaborate as a city with other forms of government, whether it be state, um, county, or federal, and that it's going to be the thing that allows entrepreneurs to work together on issues or discover the newest um, application that's going to change, whether it be traffic or the local economy. This interoperability is what we believe drives innovation and problem solving. So we've set about to leverage open data, analytics, and digital services so that we can accelerate civic engagement, expand our own use of analytics to drive decision making and performance, to leverage data to prioritize digital services so that we're using the same data that our citizens are sharing with us to actually be proactive about how to respond to their needs or pre-identify emerging gaps in the city, and to set the foundation for a smart city. This data-first type of strategy, as my team calls it, aims to get public and private parties to look at how data can tackle a challenge before we even get to talking policy change and legislation. Because chances are, if there is some wisdom or insight that data can lend to a challenge or parts of social issues, it might actually eliminate the amount of legislation and regulation that we as a government have to um, spend and invest in. So, in, um, in, you know, in less than three years, we, the, the Open Data Executive Directive began in December of 2013. Our first open data portal launched in 2014, in May of 2014. So really, in less than three years, um, it has actually taken our city, we've grown exponentially in terms of the way that we use data, and it's taken our city into a really new frontier for us that I don't think we had considered before. Um, we're now ranked the number one open data city in America and the number one digital city by the U.S. Center for Digital Government. 
We have a combined 1,100 data sets that are publicly available. Um, we have developed over five open data sites and platforms that are weaving together the city's operational, financial, and geospatial data and that monitor the city's performance. Um, to monitor the city's performance, we've developed public-facing dashboards that show the mayor's priorities in real time and that track our progress towards the sustainable city plan, which is our effort to combat uh, climate change locally. In 2016 alone, we've had over 1 million page views and over 60% of, um, of our site viewers are new. And what that means to us is that every day, new Angelinos are learning and are exposing themselves to open data, to the work that we're doing um, to provide them more um, accessible information. And our, stat our strategies are pretty simple. Um, I'm not going to talk through this one, so I'll show you this graph at best. So the first thing is um, we've learned that we need to be flexible, which is not a common thing in government, right? We need to ensure that the right platforms, education, and outreach pieces are in place. And we're trying to really marry the right platforms to the right approaches. So not getting caught up in any one size fits all, as Alan mentioned earlier, but really trying to think about what's for the issue or for the initiative or the space that we're talking about. What is the right platform? What's the right education? And being comfortable with managing a wide array of systems and just trying to knit all of them together as opposed to putting one enterprise approach across the organization. Um, we're gaining more ROI from our data through a greater understanding of the data available and, a, and, and making sure that a broader number of city personnel are actually using data. So when we started with open data, it was all about transparency. And then we shifted towards, if we're expecting the external, pub, the external groups and public to use our data to develop solutions to the city's problems, why aren't we using the information ourselves? So we've really focused the last two years on, one, making the data more easily accessible amongst city departments, creating that culture of sharing, and two, really trying to bring together greater capacity and tools. And it's about training. It's also about create uh, more awareness of the kinds of things that you can do with data or the new technologies available to transform, analyze, um, and, and, and develop applications easily within even some of the systems we've already had that we just haven't been using to that capacity. And one of the keys here is we often don't um, or, I would, or recommendations is don't forget to look at where and how data exists and in the easiest ways to unleash it. So one of the things that you're looking at is um, our GeoHub ecosystem, which was what the second sort of complementary open data portal that we developed. And the key to the GeoHub was that as we were trying to get people to extract information from their systems and put it into our open data portal, what we were forgetting is that they were already working in existing systems and that we could actually just tie those systems together and release the information directly from them. Sort of a no-brainer, but it kind of took a look. But the instinct at first was to create a whole new system, and then when you see most of the data is actually living somewhere. And so we went directly to the source, and we, we figured out the easiest way to unleash it so that now city employees can share and collaborate and really think about data both that is internal to the city and that should be shared with city colleagues, and then there's data that should be shared with the public, and making and really tying the data sharing experience to the business processes of the organization. What that's doing is then allowing the public to organize itself around information and key initiatives. So that once again, we're not just releasing a ton of information, but we're actually releasing it in a way that's contextualized and that it's organized around the issues that people care about. For the first issue that we focused on was public safety, um, and it's called Vision Zero, which is a campaign around eliminating and reducing um, pedestrian and uh, automobile fatalities. Our next issue is going to be around water. And what this allows us to do around these initiatives is, again, contextualize the information and allow citizens to really organize around the data that we're releasing. The other thing, um, a key lesson, and I think you've heard me say it several times, is really enabling interoperability and allowing and supporting and facilitating a lot of cross-departmental problem solving. Um, I always say when we analyze crime, 
if we want to reduce crime in our city, we're not going to do it by just analyzing the crime data set. We're going to have to look at a lot of different factors and indicators and data sets together. And a lot of these open data programs and, and holistic data management practices allow you to do more of that. And the third thing that we've learned, or the fourth thing that we've learned, is to deliver quick win applications, and I'll show a couple. Uh, we set out very quickly to demonstrate the value of open data, and we did it by just showing wins in various different ways to kind of to show our city staff and the public why it was worth to invest in these efforts. And along the way, we've learned a lot of best practices, as you've heard, but the most transformational one has been the power of location. Every single transaction in our daily lives has a location, and technology is enabling us to track that location more and more. And how we use this information can be the difference between being reactive versus being responsive. That's the difference to us in a connected smart city. Through the development of the GeoHub, a first-of-its-kind platform, we're leveraging uh, technology that we had available across the enterprise um, and using WebGIS to basically weave together the pockets of data that have been siloed throughout the city. We've been able to maximize location and develop web applications that put this data to work. And these web applications are all integrate are all integrating data dynamically, and they're using real-time data, which is the key. And they're telling individuals, citizens, what's happening on their street. Whether it be a real-time status of the cleanliness of their street, and now we have that cleanliness by street segment for the entire city, or a street-by-street -street analysis of crime trends so that we can micro-target resources, evaluate the impact of city programs, or plan new services, or a user-focused assessment of water and energy conservation across the city. Location-enabled data gives government the power to be connective, responsive, um, and to be the city that citizens expect. Every um, individual in this room, and, and I always use Amazon as a great example, um, Amazon knows what I want to buy before I buy it. And in a way, that's what citizens are beginning to expect from their government. We need to know when you know, city conditions are going to change before they actually happen, when, when uh, that sewer leak happens or we have a water pipe that breaks. That's the, that's the expectation of government. And so to be that type of a responsive city, the idea is to focus a lot more investment on making sure that we have the data to do so. As we ramp our collective efforts to modernize, to be the smart city that we all talk about, uh, location-enabled data is allowing us to take more real-time control of our systems and sensors across our city infrastructure. It's enabling us to more accurately understand what's happening in the city, how the city is evolving, and how we enable a better quality of life. Um, and I just want to share the couple, uh, these couple insights and lessons to keep in mind. Um, and it alludes back to some of the earlier things uh, that I mentioned, which is that data requires meaning and insights. Data on its own is meaningless. You have to invest in curating, cultivating, and developing tools that tie data to policy, performance, and outcomes. Collaboration is what leads to innovation. Data is, a powerful, uh, data is as powerful as the group of people that are using it. Share, um, sharing and collaborating around a holistic picture of any one issue in the community is what can drive innovation across the city. And public engagement and transparency are foundational. So we can't underestimate the collective wisdom of the people that live in our cities. Engaging citizens by exposing them to more data in a visual, interactive way shows, one, how decisions are based on sound evidence, but two, it guarantees that new ideas to some of these really difficult challenges that cities are facing can be tackled. As we look ahead to a better city, I'm just going to talk real briefly about some of the things that are happening in our way. The city is really looking to serve as a platform, whether it be for mobility, the connected home, or IoT, smart city. It will be responsive, and the pace of that will increase exponentially. So in all of these, whether it be in the mobility space, um, it's really about us being a platform that is a public-private venture that businesses, citizens, and nonprofit actors can engage in and co-create on their own as well, right? We can't, we can't solve um, 
our, our mayor is really uh, focused on the fact that we can't solve all of the city's problems from within City Hall. It really has to be a co-creation experience. And so as much as we're thinking about investing in the infrastructure as a platform that then can be a convening force for all of these actors around these issues, that's what's critical to us. Um, and that data and technology is no longer a vertical. So in all of these initiatives, um, it's no longer that you have a, a data and technology initiative on the side that supports city government, but it's really something that cuts across all of our city services. Um, and that's where uh, we see our connected smart city heading. So I believe time's up. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Caro, for sharing the roadmap of Los Angeles and also some best practices that LA has implemented in utilizing good data to support and also to drive good decision making.